Hey guys, I'm CMA Supra, and in this video I want to answer a few questions all relating to War Thunder, which is the game right there because I have it running for this video, and how my setup is in War Thunder for full wheel battles or simulator battles. Uh, mainly they want to know about my joystick and my head tracker. So let's start with the joystick. How did I get my joystick working in War Thunder? Well, the answer is actually quite easy. So first thing I did was, because I didn't want to set up my joystick in War Thunder itself, I preferred to do it in the joystick software that I have for my joystick, I have set up a whole bunch of, I guess, keys, I guess you can say. Like, for example, if I can get the camera to focus, maybe, yeah. Okay, so you see mouse left button points to the trigger on my joystick. So my joystick does not send a trigger key input when I pull the trigger. Instead, it sends a left mouse button input. And then if I go in game and go to my controls, this phone is not very good at autofocusing, is it? <laughs> so if I go to controls and full aircraft controls and basic, you can see that my machine guns and cannons, if the camera will focus, are set to left mouse button and they're not set to trigger pull or anything like that or joystick button one or anything like that like I just said. So uh, that's one thing I did to get the keys working and I did that for any keys I wanted. I should mention that I am not using the throttle thing on the joystick. I just don't want to use it because on my keyboard there are a whole bunch more keys that I could totally use because I use like shift and control as my throttle, uh, F is flaps, uh, I don't know, I have other keys, and I just use them on here. I can't think of them off the top of my head for some reason. So rather than using or keeping my left hand on the joystick with my right hand up here, I just don't use this thing. That's my personal preference. Uh, then to actually get the joystick working in-game, like this part with the rudder, the elevator, and the uh, ailerons, it's actually very easy to do in War Thunder, like seriously easy. Uh, so you go down here, you scroll down farther under basic controls for full aircraft controls, and you go down to roll axis, pitch axis, and yaw axis. So let's just do for this video pitch axis. So what I want to do once I've double clicked on it is move the joystick up and down. And what that will do in War Thunder is as I move it up and down, you can see that this is moving in the top of the window. That means that joist that the uh, that War Thunder has noticed that I am moving this on the joystick, and it is War Thunder has accepted that particular axis on the joystick as the pitch axis because that's what I'm currently in. So it's that simple to do it. I mean, that's how you get your joystick working. Later on, you'll have to fine tune your, your numbers. Like maybe you want a different non-linearity than 2.0. I'm personally using 2.4 on the elevator. Uh, I think I use a different number on the rudder as well. But uh, that's just fine tuning. Getting your joystick working to begin with is not involved in any of these numbers or anything like that. So let me go ahead and close that. And you would just do the same thing for roll axis, pitch axis, and yaw axis. Um, something I do recommend doing uh, if you have trouble aiming or have trouble keeping your plane still is your joystick is probably inaccurate and mine is quite inaccurate because it's just a cheap joystick so I recommend turning your pitch sensitivity all the way down like I have. What that does is it just smoothens out and makes War Thunder less responsive to your joystick so that your plane doesn't like go all over the place because the like my joystick is not accurate enough to send precise in outputs to War Thunder, so I had to reduce the sensitivity. But um, that's really all there is involved in getting the joystick working in War Thunder. Like I said again, you just do pitch axis and then you physically move the joystick and War Thunder will automatically detect it. Because you can see there Logitech Extreme 3D, which is the name of my joystick. Axis 1 is the uh, is this axis, whatever that is. So it War Thunder has recognized that Axis 1 on my joystick is what I want to use for the elevator. Simple as that. Alright, so moving on to my head tracker. This is going to be the more complicated part of this video. So this thing right here is pretty much my head tracker. Uh, the basic idea behind this is there are three LEDs on this, and these are infrared LEDs, IR LEDs. And then I have a webcam up here. I have two webcams, but one 
The left one is for actually looking at my face, and this one is a lower quality one that I'm using for head tracking. So let's pay attention to this one. So this webcam tracks the LEDs from the LED device I just showed you. And I have a piece of uh, photo film, exposed photo film, whatever it's called, that I had from many years ago, and I have just taped it in front of the camera. And what that does is it makes the camera have more trouble detecting visible light and less trouble detecting infrared light, which is what these LEDs emit. So I want it to be able to only see infrared if possible, but that's not actually possible. I can just try my best to make it detect infrared better than visible light, and so that's what the uh, the camera film in front of the webcam does. And I know that this is really dark for you guys, but I can't really do much about that because one of the side effects of using a head tracker, a custom head tracker at least, is you have to have a very dim room. <laughs> because if there's too much background light, it won't track the LEDs, it'll track all the other lights that are reflecting off and sending light into the webcam. So, um... You can even see that the, I currently have my my head tracking software up and it's reflecting, my phone is reflecting light. So every once in a while you see, oh yeah, look at all those dots. That's exactly what you don't want. <laughs> you only wanted to see the LEDs from the LED device. It's only just reflecting light because I have a lamp on for more lighting. But um, yeah, that's a basic idea of the head tracker. Now, how did I build this thing? Well, it's just a, uh, it's just a circuit, uh, an electrical circuit. I have three LEDs. One, two, three. I'm not used to a camera. Um, and they're all just wired together. I have something here. I don't know what it's called. It's optional. Uh, I also have a resistor somewhere in the circuit here. You can figure out how to make the circuit at freetrack.net. I'll probably have a link in the description. I don't know what the website is. I know it's free track something. Um, but yeah, they describe how to make this the circuit. You can buy your LEDs, buy all that. And then I just made the circuit. And then after I made the circuit, I cut out a piece of cardboard, which is that this is actually pretty stiff cardboard, although if I try to bend it, it will actually bend. So I don't want to try and bend it. Um, and then to attach it all, I just used electrical tape because it's simple and effective. Now, to power this, uh, you can see that there's two black wires running down here. And these go all the way over to a wall outlet that you can't actually see. Hold on a second. Alright, I grabbed a flashlight. So, um, like I said, dim lighting. So, the two wires, one positive, one negative wire coming from the LED device, all go down here. And I just have it laying on my bed for now, because just for the video. And it goes down here. Um, let me show you this connection in more detail. This is where I have taken an iPhone cable, just a cheap knockoff one, uh, an iPhone charging cable, cut off the iPhone end and kept the USB end, and I have wired it or soldered it up to the wires coming from the LED device. And then that goes all the way over to a wall socket, and it's just the standard iPhone USB wall adapter thing, but it's a knockoff one. And then it cost me like three bucks for that cable. It's not like 20 or whatever a real iPhone charging cable is. So um, yeah, that's how I power it, and that's how I built the device. And how you make yours is up to you. This is probably not the best way to make yours, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Most people use something stiffer than cardboard. I just used the stiffest cardboard I could find because it was easier to use than anything else, in my opinion. The way I attach, or I guess what you do with this LED device is you attach it to your headset. And the way I attach it to my headset so that it can track my head movements is with a rubber band. It's just this rubber band, which has been used quite a lot and is getting kind of weak, so I probably need to replace it. But that's all I do is I just use a rubber band to attach it to my headset. So let me go ahead and do that now, and then I will show you the head tracker in action. Alright, I have the LED device attached to my headset. As you can see, it's just attached by a rubber band. It's nice and simple, nothing complicated. It's a simple rubber band holding it on. Uh, not the safest of things, but it's worked for months, so it works in my opinion. So uh, I'm going to turn the headset here just a whole bunch of times and let you guys watch what happens in the game and on the head tracker. So if I 
try to center the headset. Uh, somewhere around there is the center. So you can see if I turn the headset right, it looks right in the game. If I turn it left, it looks left. If I go up, it kind of freaks out because I have so many lights on right now to make this brighter for you guys that it's detecting, that my head tracker is detecting four dots where that normally wouldn't. But if I look up with my headset, it looks up in game. It's nice and simple like that. Uh, I guess showing you one here, like look left, look right, look up, which will kind of glitch out, but oh well, it's for the video. So that is the uh, hardware part of my head tracker. The next part is the software part. Okay, so the software I use for head tracking is called FaceTrack No IR, and currently the current version is 1.7. Um, but I don't. It this software has a special feature where it can track your face and not LEDs. But the face tracking, while it is good, it's not as good as tracking LEDs. And so I use the LED tracking, which means that I use Point Tracker and not Face API. So. Um, there are some other pieces of software you can use instead of Face Track No IR if you prefer, although I don't like it. Um, the only other major one I know, other than Face Track No IR, is Free Track, but I'm not a fan of it. It's not the most stable, at least on my system, but then again, my system's not the stablest of systems. The motherboard is dying. So it could just be that, but I have not been a fan of Free Track. It hasn't really worked, with, worked for me. Well, Face Track No IR definitely has. Um, so that's what I use, but you can use whichever one you want. Um, what else is there to say? I guess when you do download the software, you'll have to do a lot of tweaking, and I mean a lot of tweaking before it'll work perfectly. Um, the curves I use, these took months to figure out, and I am still figuring them out, quite honestly. I don't have them perfected. So, uh, yeah, it takes a lot of tweaking to get it perfected. Um, but that's going to be the case with any head tracker. One thing I should mention before I end this video is this is my ceiling fan, and as you notice, I only have one bulb in there, and that is a single 40 watt bulb, not even a 60 watt, which is a normal household wattage. Um, the reason I only have one in there is because the others died, but uh, I haven't bothered to put any new ones in because if I do put new ones in, like even if I replace the 40 watt with a 60 watt, it becomes too bright and my white walls, such as the one back there, which is opposite my computer, um, the white walls reflect light into my head tracking webcam and so it makes dots that shouldn't exist in Face Track No AR. Like it'll see a dot on my wall even though it shouldn't see that dot because it's not one of the LEDs. So to, pre to prevent it from doing that, I have only a single 40 watt bulb and that's the cause of a lot of the lighting issues you've noticed in this video. But I just wanted to point that out, you do have to play with somewhat dimmer lighting unless you have like a really good webcam for this, or really bright LEDs. Um, the other thing is if it's during the day, which it's not currently for me, it's like 2 a.m. or something? Yeah, like 2.15 a.m. here. Um, the, that's my window. <laughs> uh, whenever it's sunny outside, I always have to take the blinds on my window and turn them up. So they're facing up like that, and I let only a little tiny bit of sunlight in to where my room is not like pitch black, but where I have a decent amount of light. About the same light as what that 40 watt bulb provides. And what this does is by turning these up, all the sunlight goes to the ceiling, and as a result it does not get detected by my, my uh, head tracking software as light, because it doesn't see the ceiling. My webcam does not point at the ceiling, it actually points slightly down, so... Any sunlight that gets, uh, gets into my room will not be noticed by the head tracker. The only danger with letting in a ton of sunlight, if, even if it's not going directly into like a wall behind the webcam or into the webcam itself, is other objects reflecting light. Take, for example, this white box in my bed, which is at the opposite end of the webcam. My webcam's way over there. This white box, if I had sunlight pointing directly on it, it would reflect light back into the webcam, and so the webcam would see the box as a light source, or as possibly even ten light sources, because it's a big box. It's not a small LED. 
So uh, that can happen if you have too much light, and so I just wanted to point that out before I ended this video. But uh, I think that's going to do it for this video. Just to recap the head tracking, that's the LED device attached to my headset. And remove the flashlight. It's just three LEDs and a circuit and they're powered via USB and a uh, wall plug-in way over there. Yeah, you can see it. And then for my webcam, I have simply taped a piece of exposed film in front of it so it sees visible light. It sees less visible light and it makes it easier for it to see IR light. And then I use FaceTrack No IR as my software using the point tracker plugin for uh, tracking the LEDs. For the joystick, there's my joystick. <laughs> That's about all there is to say about it. I only use the buttons up here. I don't use any of the six buttons or the throttle control here. I use the keyboard with my left hand. So uh, yeah, there's that. <laughs> I think that's going to do it for this video. I hope you all found this helpful and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.